Alright guys, how's it going? This is Jeff with the Assassin's Creed Cosplay Group. Uh, making a video in response to a message I have received on our fan page. Um, a message from John Cook. Um, he had a question in regards to building a hood for his Assassin's Creed pirate outfit uh, cosplay. And wanted to know uh, how to go about doing it. Now granted, um, I already have these these hoods made. Um, if you guys would like me to go ahead and make a, another video actually going through step by step on how to create them, um, I could I could do that for you. But this will be just uh, um, kind of a quick video to um, in response to John's uh, question on how to build a hood. Um, these are the two examples that I actually have um, here. This one is for our my uh, more recently made uh, uh, medieval assassin. And that one goes for goes with this outfit um, for reference. Um, and then I have my um, future assassin, which was the assassin that I made um, first. And that one is this guy over here. I'll go ahead and light it up for you. Um, and that's, this is the assassin armor that that hood goes with, uh, just for reference. So, back to the hoods, um, I'm going to go over the, this one first, because this one's a more simple, uh, design. Um, this one is a little bit more advanced, which is kind of funny, because this one was the, uh, first hood that I've made, um, when, when building, um, this was the first hood, um, I've ever made for an assassin for my Assassin's Creed outfit. So going over this guy, um, first thing you want to do is you want to get a really uh, basic simple pattern um, for a hood. Now I found the best way that I went about doing this is going to uh, Google and just finding a simple hood pattern um, and then tracing that out onto a piece of poster board. Now the reason that you want to use poster board rather than just the fabric and chalking it on is it'll actually save you fabric and um, money if you mess up. So if you mess up on a piece of poster board, not to worry. I think it's like a dollar uh, per uh, big big poster um, that you can just go back and recut the template out. And that way you don't have to go out and buy more fabric and spend more money um, over a mistake. Um, going into the design that I, I got off of the, uh, the Google Images, um, I went back and I also modified it a little bit more in the back to have more of a um, kind of a relief edge back here where it'll kind of um, it can bunch up at least for again this design because it's supposed to simulate more of an archer's hood whereas that one is um, same same design um, but that one the hood is actually meant to tuck into the armor on the back part of the um, neck area rather than this one where it's supposed to kind of bunch up and look kind of Robert, Robin Hood-esque um, in, in appearance. So, uh, kind of going over the hood, after you get your basic design cut out of the, the, the poster board, um, after you're sketching it out, what you want to do is you want to cut out those two main pieces on your hood. Now, um, the the basic template on the hood is not going to have the assassin creed beak um that will be added in um later on down down the uh down the road because if you were to cut out this with the template you'd have a nice giant seam running down the uh center of your beak and it just will not it won't look nice um it won't have a professional kind of uh look to it which is what you're trying to go for um, in building a hood. In addition to this one, this design, I wanted just to speak a little bit to it, um, was actually a custom design that one of our members in our Assassin's Creed cosplay group drew up for me, um, for kind of a, an idea for an original character. Now, her design, uh, had, or her drawing had this, um, kind of a design in the hood. Now, the way that I went about doing this, is the exact same way um, that you're going to need to do it so that the uh, to to build the basic hood, um, which is to put the two seams together like so. So if you can see here, I have two seams which are both sides of the fabric. Sorry, really bad lighting here. 
um, and then the fabric's just facing each other, and then you just sew them together, creating that uh, that seam, that nice professional seam. Um, same basic concept up here. Let me get this in the light, um, where you can see that I've cut this design out so that it will, uh, in um, retrospect, transfer the the seam onto the other side, um, so that it'll have that effect. Now, granted, uh, there are many different types of fabric that you can use for hoods. However, you've got to make sure that you have a fabric or you're working with a fabric that will lay correctly, that won't have too much, too much like of a starchy kind of a body to it, or that it, it still will have kind of a cloth-esque um, property to it where it'll lay correctly rather than looking like a, um, a very starched, piece of fabric. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're looking for fabrics um, to, to create your hoods that you want still kind of the, the best of both worlds where you still have some structure to it if you needed to um, but for the most part it's very uh, very fluid a very fluid uh, like fabric so it's not starchy. Um, going on to the end portion of the hood this has all been um, reinforced with some liner um, cloth. Now the reason that I did this is because of the fact that this this fabric in particular is very very um, uh, well it's it's very fluid as I was uh, as I said before so it doesn't really hold um, an orientation at least for the the hood area for um, what I wanted to get out of it <coughs> Uh, or the way that I wanted it to sit. So I had to kind of go back and reinforce it. Now there's multiple layers here that I use to reinforce it. I have the front piece which is this kind of a decorative ribbon-esque um, fabric um, detailing um, that I used on the front. Now this gives it a little bit more structure and then on the back I also use some, uh, some liner ribbon to even give it more structure. Um, to the hood so that it'll actually hold its orientation um, to an extent um, and not look um, slouchy or uh, saggy um, when worn. Moving on to the uh, to the beak portion of the uh, the hood. Now the two difference there's um, two different ways that I've done this. Um, this one is uh, one of the ways where I actually took the piece of fabric that I was making the beak out of and folded it in half. On the other one, it's a different process and I'll kind of touch base on that when we move over to this guy. Um, so the beak, like I said before, has been folded over. Um, the reason for that is that I wanted to, so that if the beak did f uh, flip up um, either through wind or I have it uh, pulled back and it's just uh, sitting around my uh, armor that it wouldn't show the inner the inside of the uh, the fabric the underneath portion which is uh, um, would kind of break the illusion that it's a medieval hood rather than a um, synthetic made fabric so this is a really nice process what I did was I uh, as I said before cut a square and then with that square um, folded that square in half so that the uh, the finished uh, side of the fabric was showing on both sides. Um, then sewed it together on the top portion. Now, granted, these seams I need to go back and finish them up. That's just from um, transportation and wear and tear that you need to go back and um, you know kind of uh, finish and cut and trim and clean up the edges on your fabric so just keep that in mind if you go that method um, you could uh, very well finish the seams on it I just didn't go about doing that because it would make the uh, the end the edges very uh, bulky and I didn't want to have that bulky kind of look to it I wanted to have um, kind of a, s a sleeker slimline look um, for the beak portion so like I said fold it in half and then what you're gonna do is find the center um, and what's going to be really simple to do that is actually following the, the 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 spine of the hood, and then finding the center of your triangle, putting them two together, and then sewing it. 
um, to the hood itself and that's how you get your beak. That's one method of doing it. The other method is on this one which I'll, I'm going to touch base on here in a second. And then to finish off this hood as I said before um, just some decorative lining on the uh, the outer part of the hood here. So uh, decorative lining that actually uh, acts as both a uh, support and a uh, decoration and then a metal uh, piece of a belt with some paracord drawstrings um, to finish that guy out. Moving on to the future assassin. This hood is going to be a little bit more complex as far as the uh, the methods went into um, building it. Um, same basic principles as this one, but this one had different modifications to be able to get this design, for example, in the back spine, so that it's a two two-toned spine um, on the hood. Um, I'll kind of touch base on this. And this one also has a liner on the inside of it um, as well. So in regards to this hood, this fabric is actually a tablecloth. Um, I was really lucky to be able to find something like this to go that had kind of a chain mail look but also kind of a futuresque kind of look to it. <clears throat> um, the problem about this particular fabric is that it is very fluid however it's a very heavy fabric um, so just light um, structuring or um, uh, uh, reinforcing on the uh, the hood would not help with this one it would still kind of sag um, in certain areas so I had to um, there's multiple layers of fabric on this one and I can you can kind of see how it's um, thicker than the uh, than the reinforcement on uh, on the uh, medieval hood, so that's that's the reason for that. Um, speaking to the design on how to get this on the back, now the process that you're going to need to go about doing this is that first you're going to need to get the hood uh, made up until the point that the the two main pieces, your two main templates, are put together um, without the beak on it. Um, what you're then going to want to do is take a seam ripper and rip the seams and disconnect from about the, uh, the, the top of the hood to about midway down the back of the hood. And then you're going to take your, uh, your fabric, um, whatever fabric, uh, other two-tone colors that you, would, you want to use, um, and you're going to sew those onto the pieces themselves. So each side you're going to sew them onto. Once you have that done, you're going to put, you're going to take all four pieces and um, fold them in on each other, so that it's it's kind of like a. Um, well, here, let me see if I can show you. Um, it's seamed together on the, on the inside, so I can't really. It's kind of hard for me to show you, but there's the seam on the inside where all four pieces meet. Um, that's that's how you that's how you would want to put them together and then sew them um, to to hold them all together and then you'll get that effect. Now you want to go back with uh, scissors and uh, cut the seams, um, cut where the seams are, not where it's sewn, but up until where it's sewn, and kind of feather the inside of those seams so that it'll it'll bend nicely and it won't have kind of a squarish look to the um, back spine of the hood. Moving on to the beak on this guy, the way that I did this is the exact same way as the other one. However, this one I did not fold the uh, the square over. I left the square uh, completely open and sewed it on to the hood like that. But the only issue is, is if this if I have my hood down or something like that, you'll see the unfinished backside backside of the uh, of the fabric which uh, is one of the modifications that I did with this hood so that I could put it down and not have to worry about the other side of the fabric um, the kind of a uh, synthetic looking side of the fabric um, showing um, so that's one of the modifications that I did uh, to this one that it wasn't done with this one and then in addition to that the uh, the last modification that I've done to this one that I hadn't I, I have not had to do to this one because of the fact that uh, the inside is not um, is not easily seen whether it's up or down um, whereas this one it really looks kind of cheap on the inside that's the inside of 
this. So it, it looks um, kind of cheapy. Again, maybe uh, the, the video isn't doing it justice, but uh, in person it definitely looks kind of uh, um, cheap, cheaply made, um, I guess is the term that I would use. So what I did was I went to the fabric store and I found um, this. Now this particular fabric is what we call crushed taffeta. And this one is, is like an electric blue. Um, again, going with the LEDs with the um, modern, uh, future assassin armor that I had. This was a good combination um, or addition to the hood to kind of tie all that together. Um, now the reason that I did this is because the the videos that I would or the pictures um, that I received from SabotinCon, the backing and the seams that you could you could see it. It was all very apparent because this is although this is a very thick looking fabric, it's very um, light is able to pass pass through it fairly easily. So you were able to see all the seams and where everything was kind of put together. So that in turn needed to be covered up and this does a fantastic job as well as um, gives it a more futuristic look on on the hood itself, at least when it's worn. Um, a better background for my head, I guess you could say. Um, moving on to the the beak portion, again this was all, all of these other pieces were just scraps um, that I kind of cut into a design and then mounted on top of the beak to kind of give it a little bit more detail because it was kind of um, plain without it um, and then finished it up with some, uh, some uh, stitching, uh, some custom stitching that my sewing machine is able to do. Um, which is like a pattern stitch, just to give it uh, a little bit more detail in um, uh, in the hood uh, around the seam area. So, all right, guys. Well, that that about does it. I mean, at least for me, how I explained on um, making the hoods. I hope this video helps you out in making your hoods. Um, again, if you guys would like me to make a video, you know, kind of going in depth on. How to uh, how to make the hoods? Um, I'll do what I can. Um, I've been very, 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 very busy um, uh, with work and um, other other things. That uh, it, time is very uh, limited to what I'll be able to do. But I will try my best to kind of create those videos for you if you guys need some more explanation on on how to go about creating these hoods. Um, but that, that about does it. Hope this video helps and see you guys.